Writing Easy, a podcast that takes the somewhat challenging act of writing, tries to make it a little easier. I am one of your hosts, Mary Mascari. And I'm your other host, Melissa Long. One of these days we have to get you to do the intro, because it's always me. I don't know if I, I can like handle you. that burden. I think people would be like, oh, somebody else is talking, I'm listening to the wrong podcast. <laughs> right. Like, the other person whose voice is on 50%. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. We don't want to. We don't want to freak people out. They may be like, "Where's the melodious tones of Mary's voice?" Uh. <laughs> well, this is one of the off weeks. This is when we start. Uh, we talk about a short topic, more of a problem solving kind of craft sort of thing. And we had an idea that we're going to do a little mini series here. There is a. If you Google this, you'll find this article. This I don't know where it came from originally. But there's, it's called Pixar's 22 Rules of Storytelling. And they're brilliant. It's 22 little slogans, little uh, mottos, little beautiful bits of advice that really encapsulate a lot of good writing. And so what we thought we'd do is to take each one at a time, not in order, because why would we do that, and uh, kind of go through them a little more, more deeply and help us kind of you know, digest all of them. Because you read the list and you're like, wow, these are great. These are great. These are great. And then you finish the list and you don't remember what any of them are. So this might help all of us kind of take these in a little bit more. Yeah, I'm excited. I love the idea. I also realize we talk a lot about Pixar, but, <laughs> but that's we because do. they are amazing storytellers. <laughs> they are. Yeah, I think this is like the third time because yeah. we had Meg Lefauve, like mentioned a lot. And then, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. That's, we're not. They're great. All right. So... The the problem that th this is the thing that, that happens, right? I'll have a thing that I need to write and I'll be, you know, get to this point. I need to figure something out for it. That's you know, like, just, I mean, something, something small, like uh, what's this doorknob? How's this doorknob work? What kind of doorknob is it? And I'll just sort of stop and I'll sit and think about doorknobs and then I'll Google doorknobs and then I'll Google something else and then I'll start worried. And then at uh, this whole time, no words have been written. And nothing happens. And so sometimes my whole writing session, I'll have like a word written, which is not good. Or another thing that I've seen is you start, you, you want to start, but it's kind of overwhelming because you don't know where to go. You either have not enough ideas or too many. I, I've seen this in um, some of the, the writing groups uh, online that I'm on, read some of the subreddits and things like that, where people are like, oh, I, I want to write this book, but I don't know about this problem. And I don't I want to write this. I don't know if I can do this. So they just don't do it. And that's obviously not going to work, right? You can't work it all out. Don't try to write the whole book in your head. The solution is to think with your fingers. The So then the Pixar rule for writing that this goes with is uh, putting it on paper lets you start fixing it. If it stays in your head, a perfect idea, you'll never share it with anyone. I, uh, I started taking a drawing class over the summer just for fun, and we did one of the exercises, and as I was sitting and looking at a blank page, which is a familiar sensation to me, I felt a little bit of apprehension of, oh, God, I have to, I have to now write this. I have to now not write this. I have to now draw this. I have to take my pencil, and I have to make a mark on the page, and what if it's not the right mark? And the teacher's like, well, just start sketching around it. Just start, you know, put some things in, and then... You, you draw those sketchy lines and then you find the one you want and you reinforce that and you erase the others. And I'm like, what a perfect metaphor for writing, the writing process. That you can't just, it doesn't come out perfectly. You have to kind of just give it a shot and see what happens and then go from there. Yeah. I, I often get into that space at the beginning of a project where I'm afraid to write and I don't mm -hmm. have like this fear of the blank page. It's more of like, the idea is perfect. In my head, the idea is amazing and it's wonderful and I can see it all and I'm very excited about it. But the moment I start writing, it becomes work, it becomes hard and mm -hmm. I see the flaws that I have to work through and I have to get myself mentally prepared for the writing process, which can be challenging. And so like this rule of like, get it down there, just get it down know it's going to be messy, know that you can correct anything, know that it's not wasted effort, that it's a path to, you know, the road that you need to take to get to the story and the heart of the story. And it's going to evolve over time. That's a, a, a very wise thing. Yeah. 
So one trick that I like to do that I've, I've recently figured this out is I switch fonts in my in Scrivener. I actually have a little shortcut where it, it changes the indent and I've got this sort of uh, Comic Sans-ish font. And I just kind of type out my thought process. Like, oh, what should I do with this? Should I do this? Da, da, da. And it's a mess. I mean, there's no, there's no point to it. But what's happening is I'm still writing. And so my, my brain and my fingers are still connected and that the thinking is not separate from the writing. They're happening together. And not only does that help me stay focused because I do have ADD and I will, you know, drift off if I, if I have trouble focusing in, but it also um, helps me work through the things in a, in a, a good speed because I'll also just have 72 things rapid fire and I'll forget them all. But you just stay on the page. Just keep coming back to the page, just write it down and it's a lot safer. You, know, you can delete all that crap later. You could save another version off, but you know, put it somewhere else, but just keep going. I like to write by hand. If I'm really stuck mm -hmm. writing by hand, something about what it triggers in my brain. It's just, it doesn't feel as permanent as typing something down. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh, like I jot something casually on the back of a napkin or an envelope. It's, I have the same sort of process of writing something and just exploring it. So a lot of times if I'm really stuck, I'm just like, oh, let me just like put some thought on paper and it could be dialogue, it could be an idea. Um, even the large post-it like flip charts that you <laughs> use yeah. in like conferences, sometimes I'll write things on there because it's like, oh, I have this big marker and it feels different. It's like yes. pulling different parts of my brain at, that are not thinking like, writer novel editor mode um when i'm trying to get the ideas out yeah change it up a little bit and don't it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to have it all worked out you shouldn't have it all worked out because the things you have worked out are probably not you're probably not going to keep them <laughs> so very true no point <laughs> i remember reading um i don't know if you ever read the uh xanth books by piers anthony no oh they're they were great they're they're a little problematic now they're a little dated but they they were the introduction to fantasy for I think a lot of people certainly for me and at the end he would always write this sort of like blog post although they didn't have blogs then but he would kind of talk a little bit about just his life and, and writing the book and what he did and he says one thing that he would do is kind of what um what I just talked about that's where I've got the idea is he would be writing and then another idea would come to him he'd put brackets in and then write that and then go back to what he was doing so it was all kind of he didn't lose it but he didn't loses momentum either so that worked out really well he's written like i don't know 30 books he's huge um yeah and it's a good idea and i do i like what you had to say about making something different you know changing the font taking uh lowering the stakes going somewhere else writing on a piece of paper writing on post-it notes you know if you're scared of the official typing in your word processor then you know go do it in crayon on the wall who the hell cares you can wipe it off later. <laughs> Sometimes I even, I, I, I don't do dictation. I kind of hate dictation software, but sometimes I will verbally talk through a scene yeah. um, with my phone. And then there's something easier because then when I'm like ready to like write it down, I can just play it. One, it helps me get back into the like scene and what I was thinking about like three days ago when I was writing, but also, mm -hmm. um, then it just becomes an act of, like you said, transcribing what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. So like you're not necessarily editing it and it gets something on the page. So it's sometimes that's a trick I've used to get over that hurdle of, of starting and staring at a blank page. It's like, oh, I'm just having a conversation. I'm just telling Mary what I'm writing and how mm -hmm. I envision the scene. And then later I listen to it and type it up and I have something to start working with. Telling someone else, it's a tricky thing, right? If you said you don't necessarily tell it to someone else, you're telling it to yourself. Um, but telling someone else can be tricky, you know, because then they might start giving their feedback. But if you've got someone you trust, you could just, here, just let me bounce these off you. You know, that helps kind of shake things loose. Yeah, that's why I like the recorder as opposed to talking to someone who's going to ask yeah. me questions that I'm not ready to answer yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. You, you have to just spit it out and, and get it down, and then you can fix it up, and then you can fix it up again. I'm at, in the late stages of a project, and what I'm finding is as I go back through again, some of the things I put in 
as kind of scaffolding. You know, I was like, well, I'm not sure how this is going to work, but I'm just going to put this idea in because uh, I don't know. I have now, now going back, I'm able to better connect and I don't need the scaffolding anymore. They're like, oh, yeah. I see exactly how this should be. You know, I, I, this isn't, wasn't as good, but if I had put nothing in there, if I'd stopped, I would never get, I wouldn't have figured out the, the right idea. So sometimes you have to just sort of put a placeholder in either literally like I, something happens here. I don't know what, or this isn't the best idea, but it's all I've got right now. Y you can put it in and then you can go back and fix it. That's the beauty. The best thing about writing, um, unlike a lot of other art forms is you can undo absolutely all of it and you haven't ruined it. You haven't lost it. It still counts. If that makes sense. Yes. I think it does. It still counts because it's helps unveil the story that you need to tell. Like somebody mm -hmm. outside may not be looking at it. Like a, like a family member may be like, you, you were supposed to be done with this and now you just deleted 50,000 words and that's no progress. And you, you know, like they may have a, see a different perspective, but as a writer, you have to know that even if you throw the whole thing away, you have a clear vision of that story, that world, those characters, and what you're trying to tell, and it's going to be stronger in the end. Yeah, there's no writing is wasted. Yes. I think we, I think we actually, we that was a quote that. from something, wasn't yeah. it? Somewhere, yes. <laughs> We've said that. <laughs> I need to put it like on my wall because I still forget all the time. Like when you're in the thick of it and in the moment, you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to throw that out. Yeah, so good. But the thing is, you made that. You can make more. Yes. You know, it's a, it's a like, okay, kid, I can make another one that looks just like you. But you really can this time. You can make it like that came out easy. The other one will come out too. You can, there's no end. It's not a, it's not a, here I go to, to go back to other quotes we've used. It's not a well, it's a muscle. So even if you've done 20 reps, you know, it's not like uh, if you're training for the uh, Olympics, right? Uh, like a skater, they'll, they'll jog. Like that exercise is jogging, but that's not. At no point is that in their routine. No judge ever sees it. They don't perform that. It's just jogging. But that helps them strengthen their body so that they can skate better. So it's never wasted. You just have to keep, just get it out, get it down, and uh, then you can play with it. And it won't be perfect. Yeah. It'll never be perfect. Yeah. I think as writers and as creatives, like, we are often too hard on ourselves. <laughs> like totally. We often beat ourselves up or we think like, oh, this is only a problem that creatives face and it's only a problem that I face because I'm not a writer. I'm not a true writer. Yes. Um, when the reality is that in every other industry that I've worked in, there's, a, especially in the business world, you'll hear this phrase called analysis paralysis, which is the same thing, essentially. It's like where yeah. you are afraid to launch into a project or a product because you just need one more survey. You just need one more in, like piece of information or analytics to make sure you're making the right choices. And people get stuck in that space and pay very big money for executive coaches to tell them, just put it on, just go. <laughs> like, it's time yeah. to go. And the great thing is, is as writers, we have a lot less uh, at stake. <laughs> you know, yes. like if I'm launching a new product, I have, I've invested money. It takes, I can write a crappy chapter and all I've wasted is an afternoon, but I haven't even wasted that. So yeah, it's brilliant. We're blessed. We're lucky. We are. Yeah. What are you complaining about? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think that, uh, hopefully that'll help. And then over the next few weeks, well, there's 22 of them, so it's going to be a while. We're going to take these one at a time and, you know, and see if we can uh, dig into them a little bit more. Hopefully this helps. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think that, uh, like I said before, Pixar is amazing. They're amazing at storytelling and creating just emotionally engaging stories, mm -hmm. which is I, the difference between just like a dry set of words on a page that somebody sort of slogs through and something that people remember and cherish and reread five years yeah. 10 years 20 years later so yeah cool well this will be our little master class um but we're gonna wrap up uh just to kind of remind everybody to please go to itunes give us a rate and review i know we say this every time but it makes a huge difference uh and we really really appreciate it uh if you want to know anything more about us we're on every social writing easy podcast hope to see you there yeah well then i guess we'll wrap it up and i'll say uh don't forget, writing is hard. So take it easy. I'm Mary Mascari. And I'm Melissa Long. 
Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next time. Bye.